Hey, it's with great pleasure that I introduce my next long-term project, although it won't be as long as the last one. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. And so, empty lift, but with the wave of my magic screwdriver, I will make the next project on Urban Monk TV appear right before your eyes. It's a 1980, what the, ugh, let's try that again. That's better. Honda CX500, my childhood first street bike. <sighs> Too cool. So this is it, the Honda CX500 Custom. This is almost exactly like the first street bike that I bought when I was a 16 year old boy growing up in Fargo, North Dakota. Um, I talk about that story in my book, Creating Mr. Corton, um, which is a memoir of my Mr. Corton Cafe Racer build. If you're interested in that uh, and you're new to my channel, you can check out those playlists. Uh, but I rebuild that entire bike and do a custom cafe racer out of it. But uh, we are going to embark on this new project. Um, what is different about this bike from my original? Well, I didn't have this rooster fairing on mine when I was a teenager, and uh, I also didn't have the Honda Line backrest. Actually, I have yet to confirm that this is actual Honda Line. It looks like it. And that top box back there. So, I believe I've made up my mind that I'm taking that stuff off. Uh, and just sticking with only Honda parts uh, on my build. But this tank, let me give you an overview of the bike. The bike is dirty, but the paint is in great shape. There is one tiny little chip right there, but it hasn't rusted. But along here, the decal and pinstriping work is in excellent condition. I have both side covers. This one not in the best of shape as far as the decal is concerned. Paint isn't bad. Do have a little bit of a, a scratch or scuff here. Missing the grommets that hold it on so I am surprised this thing is still here. These are the first to fall off on these bikes when those grommets wear out. The other side is in much better condition. But overall, we're in pretty good shape. I do see a little scuff on this engine guard, so it looks like it went down at one point. There are 40-something thousand miles indicated on the clock on this bike. Mufflers are in very good shape. Exhaust is not rusted that I can see. I don't know why there's only one screw holding this lens on, but uh, no biggie. Hasn't been registered since 2019, but the woman I bought this from uh, was riding it, and it has been in storage in my brother's garage ever since. Anybody an expert out there on these, I believe this is Honda line, judging from this knob and, and this whole section right here and, and just the quality of the build. Um, let me know. My CB900, I'll pop up an image of that, was a restoration project that I did uh, well quite a few years ago now. That had a almost exact same mechanism to it and that was Honda line. 
What I was told by the previous owner about this bike is that it is not charging the battery um, and that will be the major project if indeed that turns out to be the case. I'm not necessarily going to take their word for it that it isn't charging. Um, well, I take their word that it isn't charging, but I will check that myself and we'll do that in an upcoming video. But, uh, you know, I threw a trickle charger on this battery, but it is dead. It's been at one night, though. Yeah, I got nothing here. We'll have to look into the electrical system, see what's going on. If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better. How this man took this and built this. How these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship. And how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on urbanmonktv.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today. So the bike is dirty, no doubt, but all the parts are here. Nothing's missing. That's the important part. Cleaning is not expensive. Missing parts are. Uh, as you know, it was purchased in Minnesota. And of course, I'm down here in Southern California. Um, I had this stored in my brother's garage for quite some time, almost two years. Uh, he eventually did move it outside with a cover on it, which, uh, you know, is less desirable, of course. But, uh, you know, we got it here in time, and uh, I got it here through a couple named uh, Chad and Jackie, I believe. And they were just super, and got the bike down here in great condition. Uh, notice all my turn signals are unscratched, and still here unbroken you know this is the kind of stuff the mirrors are in great shape you know they covered everything with uh, at the end of that I think the other one's broken but as I recall it was broken when I bought it um, they cover everything with rags and tie the bike to the side of the trailer and uh, here's some footage of them unloading the bike.
tell everybody about your service. What, what's the name of the company? Churchtown Services. And, and you obviously haul motorcycles. Motorcycles, and then we do the rowing skulls on the roof there uh, for another uh, distributor out of North, out of Virginia. Okay. Uh, but primarily motorcycles, about 500 a year. We do around the country every month. Uh, we do about, it takes about two and a half to three weeks. Typically rotate through about 40 to 50 bikes in that two and a half weeks. Matter of fact, you're about the 50th stop on this trip alone. Yeah, wow. this one was a big was yeah, a big, big one. Trip. We had 22 kayaks with us, uh, rowing vessels with us when we left. I saw we the one, up. yeah. We had 22 we, of we those. We do a couple so. hundred thousand miles a year. Wow. Uh, do it all together. My wife and I, we've been doing it almost eight years. Almost eight years. And if people want to get a hold of you to move a bike, how, what's the best way to contact Either, you? Uh, Facebook, uh, if you uh, just... Good, all, literally all I have to do is Google Churchtown Services and we come up everywhere and we have a Facebook page you can find us on just Google our phone number you know, our phone number will come up on there email comes up we're probably one of the easiest people to get a hold of I know I didn't have a problem getting a hold of you and yeah. I'm, well, I'm glad great. I found that's you that's good to hear that's good to hear yeah. thanks you guys thank you really I appreciate, appreciate it. it the one I owned as a teenager was a 1982 uh, with the exact same kind of uh, paint scheme, but mine was kind of a dark, I'll call it black, it was more like charcoal and gray. Uh, this one obviously is the two-tone red, kind of like the red or, or the burgundy, um, but they were exactly the same otherwise. It had these cruiser bars and this step seat. I believe this seat has been recovered. Um, it does not look stock to me, but it does say Honda on the back of it, and um, it's a good job, so I think I'll leave it. Um, I don't know. I'll talk to my friend Rodney at Allison Sales and Canvas. He's my upholstery expert and uh, did the seat on Mr. Corton, and we'll see if uh, this is something we want to redo, but this is in good shape. I have decided that this bike is in such good shape that it does not warrant cutting the frame in any way, uh, making changes to you know the back subframe part, the kinds of changes that would be necessary to do a custom uh, either Brat, Cafe Racer, or Scrambler type of build. These things make really nice kind of looking scramblers. I don't know if they make nice riding scramblers, but uh, you know, my memories with this bike are stock and this thing is so close to stock that I think it needs to be left that way. So this will be a restoration and not a custom build. If indeed the stator is the problem with charging the battery, then this will be an engine out restoration. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and do a video on checking the compression and just overall condition of this engine with 40,000 miles on it. That isn't necessarily a lot of miles for this particular engine. Uh, these things can go longer than that if they're taken care of. And I do believe that this previous owner did take care of it, but um, you don't know until you know. So. We'll do a video of checking out the engine and it's, you know, taking its vitals, so to speak. Um, and then uh, if the charging system indeed does include that the, uh, or if the stator isn't working, we're going to pull the engine out. And so while we're in there, there's a lot of things we may do. Um, brakes are still rolling. The rear is simple. They're just, you know, drum brakes with uh, brake shoes in them. So we'll check the linings on that kind of thing, rebuild that stuff. Uh, we'll change final drive oil, etc. cetera. But uh, I think I need to rebuild the brakes in the front. And while I'm at it, I may as well just put a new kit in the master cylinder. Uh, not a great expense. And uh, we'll get those brakes running as good as they possibly can. It's a single disc up front. Um, you know, they weren't the greatest brakes as I remember. But uh, I did get into a hairy situation, in fact I talk about it in the book, um, where I had to get on the brakes on my 82 CX500 and uh, read the book, see what happened. So what we have with this bike is all of those expensive to replace parts like the side covers, the stock mirrors, the mufflers, 
are all in good shape. And of course, paint and gas tank, that type of thing. The fuel in here is, uh, you know, starting to turn. I can smell it. So I will have to take the carburetors off. But we will do a video on just getting this thing running. Uh, of course, I have to have it running to check the starting or charging system. And so we'll do that. So bottom line is we've got a lot of fun things that we can be doing on a Honda CX-500 which is dear to my heart because I've just got those childhood memories. And uh, it was interesting, and just a side note, my 15-year-old daughter came out to see the bike when it was being delivered. And, uh, and I said, you know, I had one of these. I bought one with my paper route money when I was one year, not even a year older than she is now. And that blew her mind to look at this thing and to think that at her age, uh, or nearly, you know, I was riding around on the streets and riding to high school on this thing and going fast and uh, it, you know, it was just a different era. So hopefully, I bought them some electric scooters. We'll see if they can get into uh, two wheels here eventually, but uh, you know, I don't think pressuring them into it is the way to go. So we'll, we'll see. You got to have the addiction and I certainly do. Um, hey, if you like what I'm doing, what I've done, what I'm about to do, like this video, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe so that you get notifications on when I put new videos up. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and uh, we are going to have some fun with this Honda CX500. Thanks for watching.